Hi, you're with Chandi, Pat Goodley once again, and we are now on to discussing the mechanics and the technical aspects of the dashboard. So I'm in the dashboard once again, and uh, I'm just gonna go over to the query editor and show you how the queries are written. So real quick, I just open the query editor. And obviously you can see that the two main data sets were the transactions and the orders, and I have two queries to clean up that data. So transactions is pretty small actually, uh, nothing major. Uh, and then the orders data is a little longer query to clean that up. Now you can go through the query to take a look at the steps as to how did I bring uh, the data in this format. Apart from that, uh, I just have a blank query called M. This is where I'm going to store all the measures and another query to extract the image uh, from my website. This is another query consolidation just to consolidate all the data. So if in case you would like to build on the dashboard for month on month uh, and you can dump all the files in a particular folder, this just consolidates all and that and puts that into transactions. All right, let's just hop over to the data model and let's just take a look at uh, different measures and calculations that I've built. Everything in the dashboard, every calculation is pretty straightforward apart from the two things that specifically I would like to speak about. The first one is the benchmark per day. That means that how do I kind of highlight the number here and then over here the number gets highlighted. So this is done through a combination of conditional formatting and disconnected tables. So let's just take a look at the relationship tab right here. I have a benchmark table, which I have created through a DAX measure. In the benchmark table, I have simple values, uh, 200, 600, 1000, 1400, and 1800. These values just so show up in the slicer. And then a simple measure uh, benchmark, uh, just to select the value that you're choosing in the slicer. And then I have used uh, um, like a, another measure which actually highlights the value which are going above the benchmark. So there's another measure called benchmark. Let me just open it up. So spent benchmark, this is the measure. Uh, which tracks that how much is the daily spent that you're doing on uh, on the combinations of transactions and then using conditional formatting I highlight that that was one uh, little thing and the other thing uh, that I would like to speak about is the order spent now obviously you've understood that there are two ways of spending money in the wallet one is the transactions you take the money from the bank, put it in your wallet, and from there you spend the money. And the other way is uh, directly spend it on orders, directly pay it through the bank, and the money which is there in the wallet does not get touched. So this is the order spent on that. Let's just take a look at that. How is the order spent calculated? It's, it was slightly tricky, so I'll just want to show you that. When you're spending money through the bank directly and not touching that wallet money, what happens is at times is that, let's say you're trying to buy an air ticket and the air ticket costs you maybe 6,000 rupees and you already have 4,000 rupees in your wallet. So what the app is going to do is, is app is going to by default take the money from your wallet, uh, which is 4,000 bucks and the balance 2,000 bucks is going to charge it to the bank and in that case you would have that row item mentioned in both the tables you would have it in the orders table and you would have it in the transactions table and obviously you just can't really double count that so I've just written a small measure to uh, handle that so uh, the first thing is that I first find the unique orders and I just only calculate my order total based on the unique orders only that was one then the second thing that I find out is are there any matched transactions I mean which is common to the orders table and to the transactions table so here is another thing which calculates the matched transactions. Now once I match the transactions and the transactions are matched, I then find out that okay, against this particular item, how much money was spent through the through the wallet. And then I calculate the credit minus debit and that's how I find the amount of the money spent through the wallet. Once I do that, then I only pick up uh, uh, in case the amount is not equal. In case the entire money was spent through the wallet, that's fine. Uh, we have already shown that in the transactions table. But in case there was a difference in the amount, then I uh, just make some calculation here, which is uh, amount uh, plus the debit credit. Actually, this is a minus number. So uh, instead of plus, this automatically takes a minus sign and deducts the amount and the balance I added to the to the final calculation. So I calculated for the unique tables and then whatever amount is mismatching, I just add that to the orders total. So that's how the orders were calculated. Similarly, the number of orders were calculated in a very, very similar way. All right, those were the only two slightly technical things or tricky things that I wanted to speak about. In case you're very interested to go through the measures, please do download the Power BI file and take a look at the measures. All right, the last thing is that in case you'd like to build a similar dashboard using your own Paytm wallet data, what you could do is you could just go 
to the query editor once again and uh, change the source of the data and just direct it to your files wherever you're downloading the files and putting them in your laptop so just do that and the other thing that i'd like to speak about is the orders the orders data is pretty messy and what i've seen is that when you download the data from ptm to your excel there are inconsistencies in how they share the data on their website. So every time you might have to make some change in the query to kind of make the query run absolutely fine. But obviously you can just take hints from the query that I have written and use everything that I have. All right, that is all about the Paytm dashboard. Tell me how do you like it? And in case you have any questions, uh, please feel free to put them down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks so much for sticking around, for watching this, and you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.